four brothels, and not a single hospital. That's how they live on the most populated island of Africa. The tiny Magingo Island on Lake Victoria wasn't populated for a long time. Only the evil spirit Kalela lived there. And now, there are over 130 people living on the island with an area of only two square kilometers. The island doesn't belong to any of the neighboring states, which are Uganda and Kenya. Moreover, it's ruled by democracy, which is pretty rare in Africa. And in just one week, the residents of Magingo Island earn almost three times more than their mainland neighbors do in a month. So how do the residents of the island live, and what do they spend their huge earnings on? Fish disputes. Lake Victoria in Africa has been the inexhaustible supplier of fish to Uganda and Kenya for a long while. But over time, the population of the freshwater fish began to decline, which is why it was decided to artificially increase the population in the 60s. And Nile perch was released into Lake Victoria. The huge and hungry fish quickly ate their smaller relatives. Of course, the local fishermen began to fish for Nile perch and sell it. Neither Uganda nor Kenya could ignore the increased demand for Nile perch on the market. Moreover, they've long been debating about the tiny and very well-located island of Magingo. While the heads of states were arguing, George Kibebe and Dalmas Tembo, two fishermen from Kenya, sailed to the island in 1991. Not even the fact that the evil spirit Kalela was living on the island could stop them. Seeing the opportunity to become rich, the fishermen spared no money and hired a powerful shaman. For some 300 kilograms of Nile perch, the shaman performed a ritual to banish the Kalela spirit from Magingo Island. The path to the island was open. At first, Tembo and Kibebe were the only two people living on the island, but another 60 people joined them soon after. The island's population quickly increased to 130 people, according to 2009 data, which had previously lived in Tanzania, Uganda, and Kenya. Technically, the island didn't belong to any of the neighboring states, so Kibebe and Tembo declared it as an independent republic. However, they weren't left in peace. Each country kept sending its representatives to negotiate with Tembo and Kibebe. In exchange for protection from the pirates and the arbitrariness of the neighbors, the governments of the countries demanded the island residents to pay taxes. But, of course, they didn't agree. This resulted in a series of conflicts between Kenya and Uganda. The coast guards of both countries even broke shacks on the island and cut fishing nets. There were a few gunfights in which several locals were killed. This also caused several armed fights between the Ugandans and Kenyans living on Magingo Island itself, which ended in the death of six people. Finally, in 2009, a committee was convened to determine the status of the island, but no decisions have been made. In the end, both of the neighboring countries began to govern the island, which the residents of Magingo Island sure didn't like. The fishermen were forced to pay 25% taxes on their profits to both Uganda and Kenya. They also gave 10% of the profits to the authorities of Magingo itself. However, they don't really suffer that much since the Nile perch is a very expensive fish and skillful fishermen can earn up to $300 to $400 per week selling it. They prefer to spend the money remaining after taxes on Magingo itself. Fortunately, there's enough places for entertainment on the island. In cramped quarters, but with a lot of entertainment. Before the mass settlement, the island had quite a lot of vegetation. Today, there's only two trees left, leaning against rickety shacks. The locals live in very cramped conditions. There's no regular housing on the island. There's also no hospital, so the islanders go either to Uganda or Kenya for treatment. All the shacks are built from the profiled iron sheets and have neither baths nor toilets, only a kitchen and a bedroom. The islanders use the surrounding waters of the lake both to wash up and as a toilet. There's no electricity on the island either, as well as television and the internet but it seems that the local fishermen and their women don't need it. Fishermen spend all their time fishing, and their women gut the fish. They gut the Nile perch right on the shore, after which they send most of the catch to be sold. They clean the remaining fish and hang it on fishing lines or wires to dry at night in the narrow passages between the shacks. And in their free time, the Mingingo Island residents relax and have a lot of fun. There are many places of entertainment on this island with the area of about half a football field. Magingo has five bars, several hotels, its own pharmacy, and a beauty salon for women and men. There are also four brothels, where local women work as ladies of the night. Bars and brothels quite openly sell alcohol and soft drugs, but only to the locals. 
Megingo doesn't suffer from the lack of tourist attention, as they often go there on tours. They've even built a few hotels from the same profiled iron sheets with dirt floors for the tourists. The more or less regular buildings on the island are the police station, built by the Ugandans, and a small church. The Ugandan police keep the order and protect the tourists. By the way, they can't stay on the island for longer than a day. This is the rule set out by the honorary senators Kibebe and Tembo, who govern the island affairs. Fair punishment. All the laws and rules of behavior aren't just thought of by the senators Tembo and Kibebe. They confer with five more male senators, which are elected by all the island's residents. The Big Seven from Megingo only make decisions by means of a general vote. The law governing the most densely populated island in the world are strict, but fair. The senators reserve the right to hold trials and punish perpetrators. They're especially hard on thieves. According to the Mingingo elder, there have only been six cases of theft on the island since 1991. For a petty theft, the thief gets beaten with straw whips. For a grand theft or repeat offense, the offender gets expelled from Mingingo Island forever. Such a prospect scares most people, especially the well-earning fishermen. Thus, there's virtually no crime on the island not counting the rare drunken fights. Moreover, new people capable of provoking conflict don't come to Megingo, since they can't settle on the island, as the senators have forbidden the construction of new houses. Potential solution of the overpopulation problem. The residents of the Megingo Island have a real opportunity to prevent overcrowding. Outsiders can't get settled on the island, but babies do get born there all the time. And many of them, despite the lack of medical care, just some 200 meters away from the tiny island, there is Usingo Island, with the area a couple times greater than that of Megingo. But the islanders are in no rush to settle there. Why? It's all because of the evil spirit. Kalela, who was banished from the island by the ritual of exile, fled to Usingo. But it turned out he wasn't alone there, since another spirit named Took, an even more evil one, already lived there and having two evil spirits on one island is just too much. None of the shamans are willing to take on exiling the two of them, not even for a ton of the precious Nile perch. Still, Usingo Island is not deserted. There are a few buildings on Usingo where scientists from different countries live. They study the flora and fauna of Lake Victoria and at the same time observe their neighbors from Megingo Island. The evil spirits Kalela and Took don't touch them, but there's a very simple reason for that. All the scientists are white, and according to the African beliefs, the evil spirits don't care about them. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel if you liked our video, and give us a thumbs up if you want to, of course. See you soon.